So Pam Landry is not here this week. Wait, 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 wait. Hiya, Pam. What are you talking about? Nothing. I was just, I I, I didn't think you were going to be around this week. Go ahead. You can do the whole show yourself. No, no, be my guest. I'll just sit back and enjoy my cold brew. (laughs) Let me just, let me just explain. If you hear something in the background, our reality element of this program is the (laughs) air conditioner that's in the studio with us. We're going to leave that Next, we're going to have the cleaning people come in while we're on mic. (laughs) That would be great. Pam just mentioned cold brew, and uh, she got me hooked on that. We're going to tell you the difference between cold brew and just regular old iced coffee. Coming up. Oh, the things you learn on episode six. What? <laughs> yeah, I know. Episode six of the this thing, the uh, Brian and Pam experience. Extravaganza. Okay, don't forget our email address. Please email us at icecreamsodact at gmail.com. Yes, and if you're going to email us and say, that's a dumb name, why did you call it that? We have enough of those, so don't bother doing that. We readily admit it's a dumb name. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Also, subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's free, and that is Ice Cream Soda CT. That's all one word, Ice Cream Soda CT. That's a dumb name. I'm going to email these people. (laughs) Don't bother. So this week, we're going to talk to Pat. She's the director of the North Haven Library about their reading club. And we're going to talk about the difference between cold brew coffee and just regular old iced coffee. Fascinating. And we're going to run down all the happenings, or at least a select few of the happenings in uh, the area. Well, speaking of cold brew, Brian, last weekend's heat is gone. Man, it was brutal over the weekend. I had forgotten what Florida heat felt like, but that felt like Florida. So it looks, the week look the week ahead looks good. Um, some rain maybe Tuesday, mostly sunny for the rest of the week. Highs in the 80s right through the weekend. So we have a list of things that are coming up in the area. Music, music out of the casinos, and some other information for you. But first, let's go over to this week in history. Okay, let's start with this week in music history. And Brian, I'm going to take you back, 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 back in time. How far back? 1958. Whoa. You're going to love this one. I was only 40 years old back then. (laughs) You look good for your age. 1958, fans of rock and roll music were warned that tuning into music on the car radio could cost you more money. (laughs) Researchers from the Esso Gas Company said the rhythm of rock and roll could cause the driver to be foot heavy on the pedal, thus making them waste Fuel. This border's right on the right on the cusp of the history of fake news as well. <laughs> 1966, this week in music history, Frank Sinatra went to number one on the U.S. album chart with Strangers in the Night. And this week, back in 1967, the Beatles met with their yogi, Maharishi Mahish Yogi, whose lecture on transcendental meditation oh. they had gone to here at the Hilton Hotel in London. This week in music history, 1969, Neil Young appeared with Crosby, Stills, and Nash for the first time when they played the Fillmore East in New York City. In 1970, a local band, The Carpenters, started a four-week run at number one on the United States Singles Chart with They Long to Be Close to You. This week in 1971, Paul Revere and the Raiders went to number one with Indian Reservation. We used to play that on that radio station. Yes, we did. Again, I just want to remind you, we can't play any music now because it would cost us a heck of a lot of money. More than we have. In 1975, the Eagles started a five-week run on number one on the album chart in the United States with the album One of These Nights. And the same year, 1975, 44 years ago this week, Van McCoy and the Soul City went to number one with... The Hustle. As in, do the hustle. Do the hustle. No, thank you. In 1980, ACDC released their sixth internationally released studio album, Back in Black. Ah! The first ACDC album recorded without their former lead singer, Bon Scott. That was because he was (laughs) D-E-D. We'll cut that out. (laughs) Yes, he drank himself to death, everyone. And if I could just say this, that is one of those albums that still is popular with all ages at things like weddings and outdoor parties. It's a fantastic album. Rock on, Brian Smith. This week in music history, 1982, Survivor started a six-week run at number one with Eye of the Tiger. Of course, that came from the movie Rocky III. This week, back in 1993, the band U2 started their two-week run at number one on the album chart in the United States with 
Zuropa. And Brian, this week in 1999, Woodstock 99 took place in Rome, New York. I don't remember that one that much. I went to the one in 1994. Yeah, I remember that you went to that one. That, that was a mess. 25 years ago, that Can't was. I can't believe that. Okay, now we have some musical birthdays for this week, Brian. You want right. to guess? You want me to do the game show thing yeah. again? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go. George Clinton. Beep, beep. <laughs> Call on me. It's a game show. Beep. Brian Smith? Yes, Pam, thank you. Uh, George Clinton, uh, 75. 78. Oh. Darlene Love. I have no idea. 78. Uh, 78. Same age. Okay, this week is Dobie Gray, Drift Away, uh, his Dobie birthday. Gray. I don't know how old Dobie Gray is. Where are you Take coming up with these? Take guess. This Take guess. 65. 77. Holy cow, that's a lie. Okay, here's the big one. Mick Jagger. Oh, How uh, old is he going to be this week? Uh, mid, he's, he's 76. Ding, 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 yeah. ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I win all the money. All okay, right. also born this week, Bobby Sherman. Bobby Sherman, teen idol from the uh, late 60s, Julie, early 70s. Julie, 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 do you love me? Yeah, my cousin had, that, uh, had his posters all over the place. Uh, how old is he? He's got to be uh, late 60s. Same age as Mick Jagger. Bobby Sherman, 76, 76. years old? Get out of here. Also born this week, Don Henley from the Eagles. Okay, is he in his uh, late 60s? Nope. 72. Don Henley, 72. How is that possible? I feel like Rip Van Winkle. I feel like I woke up and all the, <laughs> all, all the rock and roll stars are in their 70s Tell me now. about it. Okay, Verdeen White, the bassist with Earth, Wind, and Fire, and the only founding member left in the band. How old I, is he I, this I week? Last time I went to his birthday party, I didn't count the candles. 68. <laughs> All right, Guns N' Roses fan, are you? Sure. Yeah, sure. Okay, Slash. Uh, 90. I don't know. 54. 54. He's a Man, baby. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be returning on this game show. All right, one more, Brian. For all the money. Go ahead. J-Lo. J-Lo, uh, soon to be Mrs. Alex Rodriguez. Um, she's older than him. She's in her, like, late 40s. She's... she's How late? 47. 49! 49! J-Lo turns 49 this week. Does he know that? <laughs> All right, that's the musical stuff. How about this week in history, Brian? Sure, I'm game. All right, let's, let's pluck out a few. Um, this week in 1775, you remember that year, right? <laughs> Yeah, I, I just graduated from high school. <laughs> the U.S. Postal System was established by the Second Continental Congress with Benjamin Franklin as the first Postmaster General. Now, I, and I'm just getting one of the postcards from then as well. <laughs> um, here's a musical event that I kind of left out of the last list. We'll throw it in here. Uh, this week in 1965, what happened with Bob Dylan, Brian? Bob Dylan introduced the electric guitar and uh, it live at a folk festival. Ooh. Yeah, and people did not like it. Newport Folk Festival. Uh, he performed a rock and roll set publicly for the very first time while a chorus of shouts and boos rained down on him from a dismayed audience. How could you ruin the art? That was 1965. I remember distinctly saying, you kids are going to ruin music with those electric guitars. It worked out pretty well for Bob Dylan. Yeah. 1974? Uh-huh. It was the uh, impeachment. Well, the House impeached uh, President Nixon. Oh, wow. This week in history. Also, you probably remember this one. 1978, Louise Joy Brown, the world's first baby to be conceived via in vitro fertilization, was born in England. That was a big to-do. That was a big deal. I mean, I know you and I were fairly young, but um, yeah, that was a big deal. That was as big as Dolly the Sheep a few decades <laughs> later. <laughs> And then one of the uh, biggest, most uh, 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 genre-defining movies in comedy was released this week back in 1978. National Lampoon's Animal House. John Belushi. Who hasn't done that whole zit trick? You stuff your mouth full of food and go, what am I? Oh. And Brian, exactly 20 years after National Lampoon's Animal House opened this week in 1978, what movie opened this week in 19... 19- 98. Oh, I, 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 give me a clue. Another Drama, big comedy? one. It's, okay, it starred Tom Hanks and Matt Damon. Okay. Steven Spielberg. War movie? Yeah. It was. Saving Private Ryan. Saving Private Ryan. Okay, so what's going on locally? If you've got kids or grandkids, and believe me, 
by this time of the summer, you want to get them out doing something. You go to the North Haven Library. There's two more uh, days, two more episodes of Laugh Out Loud with Miss Emily. This is a chance to have the kids read books with Miss Emily. They laugh, they cry, they scream. And then you and the kids can play a game and get into some crafts, too. You've got to register ahead of time. Did you say crafts? Crafts. Okay. Yes. <laughs> call, call ahead of time <laughs> at the North Haven Library. There's two more sessions to go. Laugh Out Loud with Miss Emily on Thursday, July 25th. That's a 2 o'clock in the afternoon session. Or Laugh Out Loud again with Miss Emily on Monday, July 30th in the morning at 1030 in the morning. That's a lot of laughing. It's a lot of laughing. And Brian, on the subject of the North Haven Library, the director of the North Haven Library has a little info for us on their book club. Hi, Brian and Pam. It's Pat Latours at the North Haven Memorial Library, and I want to let you know about an exciting summer reading club we are offering to adults in the area. This club is open to both North Haven and non-residents, those 18 years and older, and it's absolutely free to play and to join. This year, the club is based on the game Clue. Participants have to solve puzzles throughout the library, and after completing these puzzles, they will receive raffle tickets and be entered into a weekly drawing for over 30 fabulous prizes. Join today while let the kids have all the fun. For more information, call 203-239-5803 or visit us on the web at northhavenlibrary.net. Hope to see you soon. And uh, again, their website is northhavenlibrary.net for more information. Now, speaking of libraries, this isn't about specifically the Hamden Library, but it's in their complex parking lot. It's the Hamden Farmer's Market. It happens every Thursday night, 4 till 7.30. The Cheshire Chamber of Commerce has a grant writing seminar. It's uh, July 31st at 8 in the morning, bright and early, so if you're going to work... You can check it out before you go to work for professional and volunteer grant writers with little to moderate experience. And it's with Jackie Downing, our friend from the Community Foundation for Greater New Haven. She's the director of grant making and nonprofit effectiveness, and she is brilliant. You will learn a ton. This event is free to members of the Cheshire Chamber, $20 for non-chamber members, and that will be at the Cheshire Academy on Main Street in Cheshire. For info, CheshireChamber.org or check their Facebook page. No matter how old you get, no matter how many years you've been out of school, as soon as they start running the back-to-school ads and the back-to-school circulars, yeah, freak out. And they start doing it earlier and earlier. I saw back-to-school ads in the uh, second week of July. So it's a universal feeling. There already are Halloween displays. Oh, it's too early. Too early. <laughs> That's my inner Regis Philbin. It's too early, Pam. Too early. And you know, where there are Halloween displays, there will be Christmas no, displays. No, don't even go there. Don't even go there. <laughs> well, let's get ready for next summer then. <laughs> anyway, um, if you're, ta- if, you're, if you're thinking about kids who are going back to school, it's fun if you can buy all the latest fashions and all the latest equipment, but there's, there's a lot of kids who really need some, uh, some help buying this stuff. Contact your local United Way to see what they need. I'll give you an example. The United Way of Milford, along with the Salvation Army, will be collecting school supplies from now until school begins to make sure all the students who go back to school have the tools they need to learn. In Milford, it's the United Way of Milford on Evergreen Avenue, and they need things. You can go to Staples, you can go to Walmart. Walmart, any store, and get uh, crayons, markers, pencils, erasers, pencil sharpeners. They still use those. So it is still summer, even though we're talking about back to school, and there's still a lot of free music to be had. Music under the stars, Brian. And Tuesday, July 23rd, it's the Timmy Maya Experience. On July 30th, the Classics will be playing on the North Haven Green. Then, Brian, Wednesday night at the historic party Morris House that's on Lighthouse uh, Road in New Haven, the Morris Cove neighborhood there, they've got music every Wednesday. This Wednesday, the 24th, the Curl Daddies, I love the name, they're described as a California-style surf and rockabilly band. And what's the name of the place? The Party Morris House. Yeah, I'm sure that gets a lot of people stopping by just because it's known as (laughs) the Party House. So that's at 7 o'clock Wednesday night. Then Thursdays in Brantford, Brantford Town Green at 6.30. Jazz on the Green, that's free. And for more info on that, BrantfordJazz.com. Friday, Hamden Free Summer Concert Series, Brian, finale this Friday the 26th. Oh. 
but check it out, featuring the band 10,000 Maniacs. Oh, no kidding. The finale, it's, it's only July. I know. I know. But let me a note on this. If you're a music fan like I, Natalie Merchant has not been with the band for many, many years. In fact, she was replaced in 1993 by Mary Ramsey. But they're still an awesome band. And bonus opening for the 10,000 Maniacs Friday at Town Center Park in Hamden. Our friend Steve Rogers. No kidding. This is all what day again? This is Friday, the 26th. Steve Rogers and Friends at 730, and the 10,000 Maniacs go on about 815 free. And and get there early, because by the time they get the first couple of thousand Maniacs on stage, it takes a long time. That's right. And a couple of more. Music on the New Haven Green. There's one more show this Saturday. It is Morris Day, 730, Saturday night on the New Haven Green. You Mm -hmm. might remember Morris Day from the movie, amongst other things, the movie Purple Rain with Prince. Morris Day and the time. And he is the guy that dropped the F-bomb on Saturday Night Live a few years ago. That's something to be remembered for. (laughs) And then finally, Brian, Sunday nights, it's East Haven's Concerts on the Green. That is free, 6 o'clock. And Sunday the 28th, the Timmy Maya Experience, they get around. They do. Let's go to the casinos. And there's some new shows. Let's go to Foxwoods. July 27th, Reba McIntyre. Also on July 27th, Tony Danza. From Who's the Boss and Taxi? Yes, it's true. (laughs) Tony Danza sings standards and tells stories on stage at Foxwoods. Oh, boy. I think I'm busy that night. It's July 27th. July 28th, it's Aaron Lewis, also at Foxwoods, August 2nd and 3rd. Here it is, the Woodstock uh, experience to benefit St. Jude's Hospital. Amen. So they're going to recreate some of the elements and songs of Woodstock. That's nice. That's a benefit, though. That is nice. Uh, August 2nd, the Steve Miller Band at Foxwoods. August 3rd, Jerry Seinfeld at Foxwoods. Oh, man. I saw him a couple years ago. He, he is definitely worth it. If you can afford the tickets, I got him as a gift. Great show. August 16th, Mark Knopfler of Dire Straits at Foxwoods. Here's a couple of new shows. August 17th, the OJs and Cool and the Gang at Foxwoods. I'll bet it'll be a celebration. I bet, I'll bet. Squeeze plays the Squeeze songbook August 23rd, and Lenny Kravitz at Foxwoods on August 25th. Would you like to do the Mohican Sun shows? Well, I'd be honored. Well, there you go. There's okay. th- three of them. And since you asked, coming up at Mohegan Sun, Saturday the 27th, Big Bad Voodoo Daddy in the Wolf's Den. That means that's a free show. Yes. Uh, August 2nd, it's Lady Antebellum. They're awesome. And August 3rd, Brian Adams and Billy Idol. Rock and roll. Oh. It's a lovely day for a white wedding. White wedding. wedding. Okay, so, Brian, um, we've been talking about Cold brew. Yes, and I just happen to have one here. Go ahead. Me too. Tell Listen, us while, I, while I slurp. <laughs> oh, no, it went down the wrong pipe. <laughs> All right, I'll finish the show. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so Brian accused me at the beginning of the show of uh, hooking him on cold brew. I knew it existed, but I, I never drank it. I always drink hot coffee. All right, I'm guilty as charged. Also, another note, Brian and I both drink our coffee black. Yeah, that's the only way to drink it. That's the only way to get the taste. Agreed. So, I did a little research. Um, What's the difference between cold brew and iced coffee? About two bucks a cup. (laughs) I have the answer, Brian. Iced coffee is exactly what it sounds like. Regularly brewed coffee served over ice. (laughs) Simple enough. Okay. The method is quick. All you have to do is brew as normal, cool it down, pour it over ice. Good. All right. However... This method dilutes the coffee. Can't have that. Therefore, it dilutes the buzz. Exactly. To prevent the ice from watering your cold cup down, make your coffee extra strong by doubling the amount of ground coffee you put in your coffee maker. Another way to make it more flavorful is to make coffee ice cubes. Mm -hmm. I've never done that. Um, You can pour cooled coffee into an ice cube tray, freeze, and use for your next cup of iced coffee. put them on wooden sticks, give them to the kids when they're sluggish. Yummy. (laughs) Hey, it's great, Dad. Can I have some more? Sure, kids. <laughs> Followed by some sugar. Okay, cold brew. What's cold brew? Why is it different from I, iced see, coffee? No, I, I thought it had beer in it, but I was wrong. All right, well, that's a different kind of cold brew. What makes cold brew so good is time. To make cold brew, coarse ground coffee is steeped in cold water for at least 12 hours. The longer the coffee sits, the stronger the flavor. 
since it tends to be stronger, serving this one with ice is okay. It doesn't dilute it. So it's kind of like uh, making apple jack of <laughs> old apples and putting <laughs> it away for a while. Or a fine wine. So once cold brew is done steeping, the grounds are filtered out, leaving you with a coffee concentrate that can be mixed with milk or water and served over ice. Because cold brew uses time instead of heat to extract the coffee's oils, sugars, and caffeine, the end result is generally less acidic and bitter than iced coffee. So it in, tastes better. Yeah, in layman's terms, let me explain it this way. Uh, iced coffee is iced coffee. If you like coffee and it's cold, it's iced coffee. Drinking cold brew for the first time, it's going to remind you of, of drinking a liquid cigar. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> that know. strong. Really? It's, it's good. <laughs> but the first couple of sips, you go, oh my, people drink this? But if you're a coffee fan, you'll like it. Yeah, but it's less bitter than it's iced less bitter. coffee. It tastes great. And when you, like you and I, drink it black, sure. we don't have the sugar and the cream to disguise any bitterness. So it's it makes sense for us to drink cold brew. And if you drink it in the afternoon, the buzz will last 24 hours. <laughs> it really does. I'll be up until 1 o'clock in the <laughs> morning. So there you have it. You've learned a little, hopefully, uh, the difference between cold brew and iced coffee. Bottoms up. Yes. Have a good week. Uh, it's not going to be as hot as it was. Thanks for being with us for this episode six. Remember, our email address is icecreamsodact at gmail.com. And our YouTube channel is icecreamsodact. You can subscribe to it for free. And I think, are we done with episode six? We're done. Goodbye!